So hello everybody, welcome to this session where I'm going to be talking about this topic, being open about your current limits. So someone in my Facebook group asked for tips about being open to your limits if you have ME-CFS. So this person said, I'm not necessarily talking about people who are close to me, more people in the wider community because ME-CFS is an invisible disability. People can't see that you've got it. Being open about you know your current limitations might mean explaining to others why you have to walk slowly or have to sit down. And this person says they would like to shrug off what other people think about them. So I'm gonna share a few tips. First thing I want to talk about is why it's important to address this. And I'm sharing these tips with love, okay? So if we don't address these issues, then they can just cause us stress. And that is just going to hinder our body's attempts to heal. Second thing is, one of the mistakes that people make is they put too much importance on what other people think. Okay, so if that's the other person here, they kind of put what they think here and what the person themselves thinks there as not being important. Okay, I think that's a mistake because if our state of mind is dependent on what others think. Okay, so we're kind of at the mercy of others. Second mistake people make is that they assume the worst. They assume that if they are open, people are going to judge them. Now that is one possibility, but there are other possibilities and we'll talk about that. Third thing, if we're not open, we kind of feel that that avoids discomfort, but actually in the long run, we can actually feel uncomfortable about the fact that we're not being authentic. Okay, that doesn't feel good. Conversely, when we are authentic, although that can feel a bit uncomfortable, especially if we're not used to doing that, but in the long run, as we get comfortable with that, it actually feels good to be honest with people and not worry too much about what they think. So I'm going to share some tips. The ABC PR tips of being open. So the first tip I want to share, the A stands for acceptance. If we were truly accepting of ourselves and the condition, we would be open. And so I think at some level, there is some lack of acceptance of ourselves and the condition, and maybe a bit of a lack of compassion. So the second point I want to make is that it is really important to be ourselves. When we're really being true to ourselves, we're being authentic, then in the long run, I believe that we do feel better about ourselves. There's a quote I came across that I like that said, whilst authenticity doesn't guarantee success, inauthenticity guarantees failure. And I think one of the things that can stop us being true to ourselves, it can be a self-esteem issue. We tend to put up others before ourselves, It can be a trait of the highly sensitive person. The good news is that we can learn to manage that trait. Used to be oversensitive to what other people think and are much more robust in that. Still got work to do, but I'm much less bothered about what other people think than I used to be. So I want to share a, a little idea for taking care of yourself, okay? Which is to get a photo if you've got one of yourself when you were little and put that photo where you're going to see it every day and every time you see it you might put it in your bedroom so that when you wake up you see it and it's there to remind you that your job is to take care of that little child within you okay so I've got some clients to do that and they actually find it really helpful exercise it helps them be more compassionate to themselves ultimately I think we need to learn to be uncompromising when necessary. If you have ME-CFS, it's really important that you learn to put yourselves first. And having worked with lots of people over the last 15 years or so, I noticed that people don't put themselves first. And, you know, I had that trait as well. Might feel uncomfortable to begin with, but I'd like to consider, will you be thinking about what other people thought of you when you set boundaries or had to state your limits in 10 years time? The answer is no. So next point, I think we actually need to check whether the assumptions that we are making are correct. Are they real or are we second guessing the situation? Now it is possible that if we 
if you share your current limits that someone will judge you. That is one possibility, but another possibility is that they may show kindness. And when I'm working with people, part of my job is to help people spot when they're not being flexible in their thinking. And one of the tendencies that human beings have is, let's say, I talk about this equation, E plus R equals O, where E is the event, R is the response, and O is the outcome. So for any event, let's say in this case, the event is having to tell someone, I need to go slowly. So there are three possible outcomes, okay? There could be a negative outcome. It could be a neutral outcome. It could be a positive outcome. And what I notice is that people tend to think about the worst case scenario. You know, there's a quote by Napoleon Hill who says, the untrained mind goes to the negative. They're excluding the possibility that people might have a neutral response or they might even have a positive response, a compassionate response. We tend to exclude possibilities and only focus on the worst case scenario. That's really not a very helpful mindset pattern. Okay, so next point. We really, really need to prioritise ourselves. Okay, if you find that you do overthink what other people think, worry what other people think, consider where did that come from? Was that a learned behaviour? Consider that we are giving away our power if we do that, and it is at our own expense. So I really encourage you to take back your power, to actually put yourself first, care for yourself. So if we think about that filing cabinet, we need to practice, and it is practice, it's a mental practice, of training ourselves to place importance on what we think and less importance on what other people think. So next point, final point, is that actually we need to reframe. We need to consider how you would respond to this situation if someone said that to you. If someone said to you, actually I need to take care of myself because I'm not feeling great, my energy is low, how would you respond to that? I suspect you would respond with compassion. I'd like you to consider that if someone is being judgmental, what does that say about them, okay? I heard someone say recently that people who are judgmental tend to be quite harsh on themselves as well. And do you really want to take the views of someone who doesn't have self-love seriously? Okay. Or do you want to put that in the not important category? And I like to consider that people who are happy, content, tend to be compassionate towards other people. They tend to be supportive. They tend to want to build people up rather than put them down okay so it's really important that if you recognize that you'd be kind and compassionate to other people then you recognize that that is a really good trait and if other people don't have that it says something about them so in conclusion what you think has to be more important than what other people think And that is a practice. That's something we have to cultivate. There's a poem by Marianne Williamson called Our Deepest Fear. And I think it's actually a really relevant poem to this topic. I will post that poem in my Facebook group. So if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link below to join my group. So if you would like help with this, I'm happy to share a video where I talk about the nine steps that I focus on when working with people and as you watch the video you can score these nine different areas in terms of whether you're red i'm not great at that particular step i need to work on it you might score it yellow or amber i'm okay but there's definitely room for improvement or i'm green i've really nailed this topic and you can score all these steps so you can get some sense of where you need to focus on and Maybe you can identify some strategies to help you move forward. Anyway, so I'm going to say thanks for watching. But if you've got any questions, do come back to me and pop a comment in the chat. Be really interested to hear what you found helpful, what your takeaways are. But for now, thanks for watching and bye for now.